and turn the recording on. Because that first was just for you. So this is Lori Ruff, the LinkedIn Diva, and we're presenting with Austin Community College today, Alpha Austin Community College uh, chapter, which I was going to tell you is in Austin, Texas. I'm in Lynchburg, Virginia, and we are rocking LinkedIn today. So we learned how to post a status update. Now we're going to learn how to network on LinkedIn. So when you came to LinkedIn, this is the screen that you see, the screen where you can um, post, where you can improve your profile. You can see what um, is how you're doing in your network. On the right-hand side, you can see ways to stay engaged with your, uh, with your community. I'm going to pick this up just a little bit more. And so you can say, congratulations. I can like that, um, that he's um, that he's there. Philip has a work anniversary. I can like it or I can click on message and here's why. I can click on like and it shows a thumbs up, kind of like these do, thumbs up. But if I send him a message, dude, this because this is how I talk, right? So proud of, of your um, staying power. I remember when he... Uh, when he got this job, so proud of your staying power. My keys on my keyboard are sticking. Um, so I'm going to have trouble typing today. All right. And then I send him a message. And then it goes, so it gives you like 15 different things that are going on with the people that you're connected to. Isn't it cool that every single morning, Every time you open LinkedIn, you can engage with 15 people in your network about something that's important to them. They've got a job, they've got a work anniversary, something's going on. Um, and then, so that's something that you want to do every morning. And then, whether or not you post yourself is one thing. That's okay, but think about it. Everybody's talking. So there's a group of 15 people in the room today with you. What if you all stood up and spoke at the same time? So let's try that. Everybody stand up and say, hi, my name is, all the, on the count of three, all at the same time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn on my webcam again, all at the same time. One, two, three. Hi, my name is Trian. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I heard that too. And that's what happens when everybody posts on LinkedIn and nobody looks to see what other people are saying. Imagine how powerful it is then if you go through your, through your network and you just scroll down the screen of what other people in your network are posting and you like and comment on 5, 10, or 20 posts. So here's a gentleman who's sharing that a member of his network became an American citizen today. And I liked it. And you can see that nine people liked it. And I can click on who liked it and it'll tell me the different people that liked it. That's great, but most people don't do that. But if I comment, welcome home, Gopesh. Congratulations on achieving such an amazing dream. And notice that my name and my picture is there, right, with the comment. So my, um, my connection, Tim, will see that Lori Ruff commented on his post. And so did Noreen. So I liked her comment. And I can... Um, I can reply to her um, of one heart and mind with you. I'm a little bit of a hippie chick, so um, you just have to put up with my sister thing. And so now she'll get a notification that I commented on her comment. And people will see Lori Ruff is engaged. Now, I'm only going to do this twice a day for me. That's my, that's my pattern. If you do it once a day, people will see that you're engaging with your community and they will remember you because they see your face and your name all the time. This is as good as getting in your car, going down to a networking event at the local chamber or at a business or at the club or at the college and showing up and shaking hands. So imagine if you, if you showed up and shook hands with a bag on your face. So over your head, right? Now look at Bill and look at Leah and look at Colleen. So Bill shared and he's got a lovely one. And Leah shared 
and or she was mentioned in the news, and then Colleen shared. Who, who do you think you're going to remember the next time you see them? Or who's going to stick in your mind a little bit? Because Bill's wearing a pink hat. And, and Colleen has a great headshot going on there. And what's the name of the other person? I have to go look at the update to go see it's Leah. Does that make sense to everybody? How many of you don't have a picture on your profile today? Raise your hands. Does everybody here have a LinkedIn? Is everybody on LinkedIn? I know. I don't know. How many people are not on LinkedIn? Him out. Oh, all right. Wow, well, we have some more work today. <laughs> okay. All right. Although half of us are not on LinkedIn just yet as of today. All right. So what I want you to do when you get on LinkedIn today, this afternoon, you're going to um, go to LinkedIn.com. And you're going to join the network, or some of you that are in the room can send them and the others in the room an invitation that they can just click on and, and move forward with. And you'll be able to um, you'll be able to um, immediately put your name and your professional headline. And because here, look, Colleen is a VP recruiting and strategy strategy with the Mice Groups, uh, regional leadership, Silicon Valley. Um, and she's sharing an update from a friend, um, fighting a, a, a cause, and she said so wonderfully stated. Now I can I can uh, I can like that, and she'll get a notification that I like that. Um, and I really don't know what to say about this. If I'm not sure what to say about it, here's a link, and it opens up in a new in a new tab. It's in the UK, so it's .co.uk, and uh, fighting Adlands feminist cause. Uh, from gender-specified areas to half-dressed women walking the floors. If this female reporter has taken one thing away, it's that gender debate in Adlan is far from over. Um, and so, you know, I I can just glance down and read through really quickly that and see what's going on there. And if this is something that I believe in, I'll comment. If it's not, because it's it's a what we would call a politically charged or could be a politically charged um uh, uh, update, then I'm going to make sure that I understand the issues really care carefully before I go in and, and comment on it rather than just commenting quickly. So I'll like it, but then I'm going to move down. And then it shows me people that I may know. Um, latest news from the creative group that does not have a, a company icon on their profile. How creative could they possibly be if they can't put their own image on their company page on LinkedIn? That's all I'm going to say about that one. But the creative group isn't very creative, are they? So let's uh, let's keep going down and um, find somebody. Um, Peter Grazier, drop a name. Who's the best manager you ever worked for? Now, he posted this update 12 days ago, and nobody's commented yet. How powerful do you think it's going to be if I like and comment on it? Wow. Hands down, uh, John Mack at what used to be Nations Bank, now Bank of America. Uh, John Mack, uh, treasurer. Um, and present day. Charles P. Garcia rocks my world, my professional <laughs> world. <laughs> Better say that one carefully, huh? <laughs> All right. And so I'll comment. Now, I can share his update, too, and, and more people might uh, from my network might like and comment on it, right? And if I want to do that, why should I type twice? I'm going to copy this and paste it and click on share. And then I will share an update and also post it to Twitter. But don't worry about Twitter. We're talking about LinkedIn today. And then I'm going to click on share. So do you guys kind of get the, the essence of, of um, what's going on down here? So I've got a lot of uh, folks in Seattle, attention designers looking for an entry to mid-level mid design person 
in Seattle, the surrounding area. Um, I, I can uh, like this and comment, and I, I could mention, um, wow, great opportunity for friends. Um, um, I forgot her name. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Now when I'm kind of on the spot, I'm like, okay, who was it? Um, let's see. I really don't remember her name, so I won't. I won't put the. Um, I won't put her name in there. But you can see when I start to type the at symbol, that people in my network come up and companies in my network come up. So I could say at alpha. Seattle Alpha, choose the company name. Seattle should get involved, right? So I can put that kind of stuff in uh, in an, in a um, in a post that I comment on. Now that's great. This is networking with your community and with people who are directly connected to you. And I talked about looking at perhaps a company or looking at people that you'd like to emulate. So let's just say that um, somebody wants to follow EY, that that's a, a company that you want to get involved with, um, that you might consider working for. Their company page on LinkedIn, um, if you look up here on the, on the search box, you can search all people, jobs, companies, groups, universities, posts, your inbox. So I typed uh, I, I typed the uh, companies here, and then I typed EY, and of course EY and, and all these different um, companies start to show up. So getting to this page, their their quest their question their post this is what they choose for one million five hundred thousand followers, one point five million followers, and this is what they put on the top of their company page. Can a question start a ripple that will help the world work better? What does that tell you about EY? It's not, can a question start a ripple that will help the world or that will help the world be better, that will help the world work better. So EY is a company that can help my company work better. Does that make sense to everybody? Did you see what just happened there? The way that the question is stated. Now, if you look at a company and you are quiet and still, when you're doing this part of your networking on LinkedIn, you'll notice things like that. And then when you sit down in front of the recruiter from EY, where you might want to work, you'll understand that they're about how to help the world work better. And you're going to start phrasing your responses like this. The recruiter is going to ask you a question about a time that you had an opportunity to solve a problem for a client or for uh, a, a problem at work. And you're going to start it like this. I helped my company work better by, and you're going to complete the sentence. Does that make sense to everybody? So we're taking the language that is important to EY, the way they want to be known, and we are self-identifying with them in the language we choose to use when we speak to and about them. So even if you're not talking to somebody at EY, but you're talking about EY, you should start using the language of EY so that when they're passing you on the quad out when you're talking to people, and they happen to overhear something that you said, they will overhear what you said about them and it will pique their curiosity because of the way you said it. Does that make sense? Yes. All right. So somebody, um, somebody who has solved a problem with just this little bit that you know about EY, and I will share with you that they're a global, global leader in assurance, tax, transactions, and advisory services. The insights and quality services we deliver help build trust and confidence 
in the capital markets and in economies the world over. We develop outstanding leaders who team to deliver on our promises to all of our stakeholders. In so doing, we play a critical role in building a better working world for our people, for our clients, and for our communities. Now, if anyone is in the room and you've solved a problem for a client or someone at work or for your department, maybe if, if that doesn't apply, maybe even at home or for a neighbor, just take a moment and stand up and talk about how you made the world work better. You can say it in three or four sentences if you want to, or you can tell us a little bit longer story. Somebody has to stand up and do it. Elisa, I've, I've worked with teachers who are getting in trouble with their uh, school district employers, so I solve problems every day, but it's not making them work better. It's, it's putting out fires. Uh, I like that. I, I help teachers keep their jobs better. I help teachers in the school district. Here's how I help the world work better. I was able to work with school teachers who were in who were in jeopardy of being fired to not only keep their jobs but to be better teachers. Yeah, that sounds about better. Yeah. Well, that, you know, in putting out fires, you're also helping them see how they can do that themselves in the future. So exactly. Right. Yeah. So you see how that works. And so when you're talking to a recruiter, that's the way you want to phrase it. Now. I'm talking about when you're talking to people, but look, we all have a LinkedIn profile here. So here's Joswell Placentia. He's a, he's on Alpha Board of Directors as the student uh, student director. Uh, he's co-founder and managing partner at Project 99 uh, from the greater uh, New York City area, and he's worked with companies <clears throat> like Alpha, member of the Board of Directors, uh, consulting summer analysts with Accenture. Strategy Consultant with Boston Red Sox, Investment Management Summer Analyst with Goldman Sachs, with KPMG, with EY, with BNY Mellon. All right, and so what does he say about himself? In the public eye, who does he want to work for and what is he working for? So I'm just kind of scrolling up and down his profile, and I'll send his profile to you in the, in the chat, um, <clears throat> which is right here. LinkedIn.com forward slash in forward slash Joswell Placentia. And I'll put that in the chat so you guys can, can pull it up before we close down the, the um, meeting. And then listen to how he talks about himself. 21 years old, featured in NBC, ABC, PBS, C-SPAN, and the Wall Street Journal, Joswell Placentia is a social entrepreneur, youth advocate, and community leader. Jaswell brought this passion to the number one school for entrepreneurship in the United States, Babson College, and he said that they, he got that information from U.S. News and World Report, where he is a student and co-founding, and where he's a student co-founded Project 99, a startup focused on inclusive entrepreneurship, which piloted its first program this past August in the Dominican Republic. And he talks about the, he talks about more about that. Now, the only thing that I would recommend that Joswell do differently is to speak in the first person. Here he's, he's speaking as if this is a new story about him, but we're looking at his LinkedIn profile. This is his proxy, right? Now I want to show you another, um, another, uh, let's see, where is he? Yeah. All right, I'm going to I'm going to open up Kaylee in a, in a new tab and, and take a look at Kaylee. So, <clears throat> she's an incoming associate product marketing manager at Google. And she's also in the third person. So, what's going on with this? Why are people speaking about themselves in the third person? Why is that important? Because just like you don't want to go to that networking event with a bag over your head, you don't go to a networking event talking about yourself in the third person. What happens if you do? Seems a little, almost like, yeah, it's awkward, yes, first of all, and almost a little bit egoistical. Yeah, a little bit, yeah, a little bit egotistical. I love it. So let me see if I can find somebody here who, <clears throat> who, speak, has, a, who has a, um, 
uh, a summary. You can also just walk in and hand people your your re your resume. That's so what these just, people are doing. They're handing them their resume. There's no there's no summer there's no summary here. Here's my here's my resume. You know, hey, great Lori. great resume. All right, Lori, just a second, Jay. Lori, I have a question. Uh, I know you're kind of running short on time, um, but um, I've heard about people posting like video descriptions of themselves. Like maybe there's a link to a video that That's kind of is like a, kind of like a selling yourself in a like elevator pitch or something. Um, right. Do you that as a regular practice in LinkedIn where people have like a video? Of themselves? Absolutely. Videos, photographs, articles. Um, here's a here's a um, a, a home page. Here's a, a documentary. Uh, here's the website. Here are articles, um, and and just things that that uh, Jaswell put together, for, or other people put together that featured him. Here's a, a interview. Um, here is a, an evening at the benefit, so I can see. Here's a seven minute clip of uh, of Jaswell. That he had produced because he understands the importance of personal branding. Good evening. Right. So that's really cool. On my profile, you'll see a couple of uh, of in video introductions as well. And then here's Charlie Garcia. Now, Charles Garcia is the CEO of Alpha, Chief Executive Officer, Empowering Latino Leaders, Passionate Advocate for Today's Professional Latino, Alpha.org. And he's got um, things that he's published, and he's got news about himself and, um, and, and interviews. And he says, now listen to this LinkedIn profile. This is a summary that I want you to really pay attention to, and I want you to find other summaries where people are speaking about themselves in the first person that sound conversational. Because when you walk into a networking event and you engage with other people, when somebody who never met you before lands on your profile, what are you going what are they going to think about you? You have the opportunity here to fulfill everything we've been talking about so far this morning. Your LinkedIn summary is only less important than your profile, your name, your picture, your name, and your, your professional headline. Because your picture, your name, and your professional headline shows up everywhere you engage on LinkedIn. And then when people click to go see your profile, this is what they're going to see about you first. For over 25 years, I've served as a strategic advisor for numerous businesses, the military, nonprofits, and political leaders. I'm the CEO at Alpha, the largest Latino professional membership organization in the U.S. In addition, I'm chair of the South Florida chapter and co-chair of the Puerto Rico chapter of Tiger 21, the premier peer network for ultra-high net worth individuals. I'm also the regional chair for Personal Investment Network for the Young President's Organization for the Southeast and the Caribbean, which provides members market-related investment education to help them become better stewards of their wealth. There's an elevator pitch if I ever heard one. But I want to get to know Charlie, so what do I do to get to know Charlie? He wants to inspire people. My passion is to inspire people to achieve extraordinary results while leading an authentic and fulfilling life. That is... Um, in perfect alignment with his role at, at Tiger 21, at CEO of Alpha, and through his experience. Now, that is really, really powerful. And even his experience as CEO of Alpha, you may not be CEO yet, but if you want to be, you want to be watching CEOs right now, and you want to start talking like they do about yourself and your accomplishments and how people can find value in a relationship with you. I became CEO of Alpha at a pivotal point in the company's 43-year history. I've played an influential role in the formation of the Alpha Way. Alpha is the largest Latino membership organization. So again, first person conversational, right? And so when you look at profiles on LinkedIn and you see anything that's written first person conversational, take an extra moment, look at that person, what are they doing that you like? Now, let's say that you're going to go to an Alpha event and you have the opportunity to meet Charlie Garcia. He's going to be at that event. Was anybody at the Alpha convention this year? Yes. Okay. And so you may have had the opportunity to meet Charlie Garcia. Well, if I think I'm going to have the opportunity to meet him, I'm just going to go to the bottom of his profile right here, and I'm going to look at a couple things. I want to see what groups he's involved in 
Alpha, YPO, Onboard. I'm going to go see what groups he's involved in that I might join and engage in. And I'm going to look at people who have recommended him. Fifteen people have recommended Charlie Garcia. But here's something interesting. Given. So I'm at recommendations near the bottom of his profile. I see the recommendations he's received. I'm going to get a chance to meet this person in person. I want to see what's important to him. So not only what he says about himself, but also what recommendations has he given? Wendy Gartenberg. It's rare you come across standout talent like Wendy. I've had the chance to work closely with her for the last four years in my role, leading a business area that represents over 10% of the operations of the organization. Ridiculously efficient is the phrase that comes to mind when I think about Wendy. Um, her ability to juggle multiple projects is unlike any I've seen before. She's made a dramatic difference in the productivity level of my team. Not only is she a pleasure to be around, as a team member or leader, she's always creatively looking for solutions to problems, and that's why Wendy earns my highest recommendation. Wow. If you have any of those skills or talents or attributes, that's the thing that when you get to meet Charlie Garcia, you talk about. I love creatively looking for problems, uh, for solutions to problems. Right? Susan is awesome. I'd recommend her without reservation. Passion, enthusiasm, professionalism. Passion, enthusiasm, and professionalism, right? Those are things that are important to Charlie. Sarah was very conscientious professional, gave 120% to whatever project he was working on. Getting it done and doing more than expected is important to Charlie. When I recommend Lori to a CEO of a Fortune 500 company or to just another professional, I always know she'll make me look good. She'll get rave reviews. She's a consummate professional. David has gone out of his way as the co-founder of High Tech to assist talented Latino companies get access to capital. He's mentored Hispanic corporate leaders. So these are the things that are important to Charlie. Where else might this come in handy? Let's say that you're going to have an opportunity to go to an event where EY is, um, at a, at, is there either presenting where it's a career fair and you know they're going to have recruiters there. What do you want to know about EY? You want to know about their people, how you're connected. I have 37 degree, first, uh, directly connected to 37 people at EY. Now, you know, I haven't looked a lot at your profile, but your profile is, again, speaking about who you are and want to become in the next six to 12 months. Short term, think about the long term. Where do you want to be in three years? But speak to the immediate future of who you are because that is how people will see you. And again, instead of somebody they might hire because they have a job opening, you can all of a sudden become the solution to a problem that they're having. Instead of being somebody who needs a job that happens to fit the bill for something they're hiring for, you can become the solution to a problem they're having. Now they're gonna come after you aggressively and they're gonna want you and they're gonna make sure that they get you. So you can see who you're connected to and how you're connected on the top right of the company page. Make sure you're following companies you're interested in working for. Click on see all, and it will open up a search for you with all of the people who are currently employed. Now, I don't want people who are at, at EY Canada. I want people who are at companies in EY. I want people who are in the United States because I have a chance to meet them. And I'm in Austin, Texas. I want to put Austin, Texas area and add that as one of my filters. And now there are still 47,000 people who are in the U.S. Let me unclick U.S. and just focus on Austin. Now, is 263 people manageable? So from the company profile, I clicked on see all. I got rid of the auxiliary companies or associated companies that don't have a, a, any relevance to who I might meet today. I put in where I live, where I might be um, able to see somebody who would come to a career fair locally, and I'm down to 263 people, and I want to look at, let's say that you are getting your CPA exam and you want to work in the um, audit area. 
I'm going to look for people who also have the word audit. So what I want to do here is click on advanced and then put in the keywords audit and then scroll down just a little bit and click on search and refine my search one more time. And now there are 24 people in Austin, Texas who work in audit area at EY. Audit staff, audit intern. Wow, I might connect with Brittany to find out how she got that internship. I might connect with Giselle and find out how she got that, um, that position. Here's Kimberly, an audit manager. Here's an audit partner. What's important to the partners in audit at EY in Austin, Texas? Well, let me find out. I'm going to click on his profile, and he's going to be a guy who is ready to connect. Check out his profile. I didn't prepare this one. I was just, I, I'm, I'm doing the search as we go. In my role, first person, conversational. In my role as a partner in EY's assurance practice, I focus on providing exceptional service to clients within the technology and biotech industries. During 20 years with the firm, I've experienced extensive ex experience working with businesses of all sizes. My areas of expertise include serving clients and semiconductor, software, biotechnology, advertising, manufacturing, entertainment, and publishing industries. I've established myself, I have established myself as a proven leader on audits. I have held several roles. I'm also highly involved in the Austin community. I currently serve on boards of LifeWorks and the Children's Advocacy Center of Texas. Why is this important? Because if this is a guy that you look at and you say, wow, I'd love to work for somebody like him, you want to go check out those nonprofits because they are who he chooses to give his limited time to. They are who he cho chooses to give his limited time to. So that is who you want to connect with, and this is who you want to engage with. Now, you may not want to click connect and connect to this person just yet, but I'm going to click the little arrow, hover over the little arrow beside his, beside his name, and I can view recent activity. I can scroll down to his, the bottom of his profile and look at recommendations he's given. I can see groups he's in and join some of those groups, and I can learn more about those nonprofit organizations and why he might be involved in them. If they are nonprofit organizations that I think are cool but not something I could get passionate about, you just want to learn about them. If that's a place you could be to express your passions, that might be something that you look at maybe volunteering for because you want to become part of Jason's world before he ever finds out that he wants to hire you. You want to be involved in the things that he knows, that he likes, and the organizations that he trusts, because if you are also involved in those things with authenticity, because they're really important to you, you will become somebody that he gets to know through the natural course of things, and you will become somebody that he might consider hiring through word of mouth, not posting a job, but because there's something coming open and he's already gotten to know you, like you and respect you, and he thinks you're a perfect fit to help solve problems that they already, that they are identifying that they have. So I'm gonna also click right here on view recent activity. And then he hasn't had any in the last couple of weeks. So I'm gonna click on follow to just kind of follow him so when he does have updates, when I open up LinkedIn in the morning and I come back here, he might be one of the people that shows up on my network activity because I am following him on LinkedIn. So I'm just gonna scroll down real quick. He's been an audit partner with EY since 1993. These are the skills he has, financial reporting, accounting, financial analysis, SEC filings, due diligence. Now, you guys are sitting for your CPA exam, right? And here he knows about CPA. Four people have recommended him for that. But what are the things that most people recommend him for, the things that he does really well? Financial reporting, accounting, financial anal analysis, SEC filings, due diligence, internal controls, GAP, financial accounting. Right? Those are the things, if you want to work for this person, in this organization or in his division or in his area, these are the things you also need to learn how to do and that on your own 
profile instead of identifying the 20 classes that you took and the 15 skills that you have, you want to focus on five. Financial reporting, financial analysis, SEC finds due diligence and internal controls. Why, why not accounting? Because you've got your CPA. Notice I said that in the present tense. You've got your CPA. There are 15 people in that room. You've got it. Don't worry about that. Put it on your profile, put your name, comma, space, CPA after your last name, and people will know you've got your CPA. They'll know you know accounting. But what they really want to know is, can you help me with my financial reporting, financial analysis, due diligence, internal controls? Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. All right. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. Whoa, he went to the University of Texas at Austin. You guys are at Austin Community College, you've got bachelor's degrees, put both of those on your profile because when you go to your profile and you look at people who went to the University of Texas at Austin, you're going to, I, I just happened to have pulled that up earlier um, because I figured you're in Austin, you may transfer to a four-year degree, you may go after your, your master's, uh, you may look more at this university, um, where careers, explore careers of alumni, here's where they work. That means that if there's an alumni of Austin Community College, by the way, so let me take a look at Austin Community College as well. Um, Austin Community College. I'm going to uh, open this up in a new tab so that I don't lose my place here with the University of Texas. And I can do the same thing with the University of Austin, the Austin Community College. Where do they work? Where do we have alumni that might help me get a job too? Are any of them at EY? Let's find out. What do they do? Where do they live? Uh, where do they work? Um, what's, what are they skilled at? What did they study? How are you connected? I'm only connected to four people in Austin who are alumni of the um, of Austin Community College, and that's Dan Park, Marcana, Debbie, and Glenn. Check that out. How many people are you connected to that also went to Austin Community College? Because I can reach out to these people if I'm also there and say, hey, we both went to ACC. I'm looking to get into the University of Austin at Texas. Now imagine if I look at these alumni and they also went to the University of Texas at Austin. We seem to be on the same career path. I'm, I'm following a path that you've already blazed. A tra I'm following a trail you've already blazed. I'd love your advice on how I can get into the University of Austin, of Texas at Austin, and what I might study to earn an exemplary career path like you, like you've traveled. How can I become an account executive? How can I be an IT solution provider? Right. So you want to you want to take a look at this notable people who've graduated from UT Austin. Students and alumni who've graduated from UT Austin. Recommendations that people have written about UT Austin. You can dive deep on companies, on people, on alumni, on employees, on managers. I'm just going to, um, I have Israeli open here for a reason too. Um, Head of he he was an alumni um, he's an alumni person that that I that I opened up, but you know looking at skills and stuff, you guys need to connect. You all need to connect. There are 15 people in that room. You should all be on LinkedIn and you should all be connected to each other on LinkedIn. You should all recommend at least five skills for each other that are important to the person. If you if you look and go around the table. I want you to do, here's your homework. Everybody get on LinkedIn. Everybody make sure you've got a picture, a name with nothing else in the name field but your name until you earn your CPA, then comma space CPA. Put a professional headline of where you are going, who you are, what value you bring, what solutions you provide, what you want to become. And then I want you to... Um, I want you to look at that, connect to each other. I want you to recommend each other, endorse each other for these skills. And it's as easy as clicking on 
I can't click on that because I'm not connected to him. Um, let me go back to Joswell. And I can scroll down to find Joss Wells. You can see I've, I've endorsed him for leadership, public speaking, entrepreneurship, social networking. Okay. And you want to, you want to endorse each other for these, for the skills that are important to the other person. So you're going to sit at the table together. It's going to be a big table. Maybe you have two tables with eight people and seven people, right? And, or three tables and you, you swap people. Right. So if you have a table with eight people and a second table with eight people, then four people from each table stand up and swap places. OK, or three people stand up and swap places and then you do it again, not the same three people. All right. And that way you endorse each other for the skills that are important to that person to find the role that they want to be in. If if working with education professionals is important to you and you tell that story in your profile that this is important to me and here's an example of somebody I was able to help of a group of people that I was able to influence tell that story in your LinkedIn summary okay endorse each other for the skills connect to each other make sure that you're connected on LinkedIn and as you Go your separate paths as you take the CPA exam, you will always have that connection. You'll see each other when you post updates. You'll, you'll be able to like and comment on them and keep the relationship going in a way that's powerful. Why? Because everybody in that room is after, in essence, the same thing. A better career where you have professional certification, where you are respected as a leader in your industry, as a leader in your team, as a, as a person who gets stuff done and has resources. Now, what happens if you are at EY and somebody comes in and says, um, hey, we've got this problem and it's not your area of expertise, but you remember when you were sitting at Austin Community College around the table with the other folks that there was a, there was a lady or there was a gentleman that sat across the table from you who mentioned that skill. Let me go take a look at his profile real quick and see if he's followed up. Is he still doing that? Is that somebody I can call and say, hey, I'm an EY. We've got this problem. I need to ask you a few quick questions. Have you got 15 minutes for me, like tonight, tomorrow morning, sometime this weekend? And you'll help each other. Of course you'll take their call. Why? Because you've been through this experience together. You've done it. You know what the other people around that table and in that room are doing facing and how they're getting it done. One big way you're going to get it done is to continue to connect to stay engaged and to help each other and stay in touch with each other. Now you've got a network of 15 other people who can help you with problems that you are not an expert in. You have developed a valuable network and you're going to stay connected moving forward after classes are over through LinkedIn. And that network is going to grow. And it's going to build. And as one person brings more people into their network, other people sitting around the table are going to see that. And they're going to say, is that somebody I should connect to as well? Or just make a mental note of. Maybe I should go follow them. So when you go look at somebody and you go see their updates, so right here, view recent activity, at the very top of the page, you're going to see that person and you're going to see follow. Right. And if you're not following them, even if you're not connected, that's OK. Follow those people. Their updates will sh start showing up in your network and you'll see if they're valuable to follow or not. If they're not saying anything, if they're just posting memes that feel good, that's great. I love that. But if it doesn't speak to value that you value or that will help you in your career, unfollow them. Follow people, companies, universities, alumni, celebrities who bring you value or have the opportunity to bring you value or to whom you can bring value because they may become clients. You may decide, you know, in 10 years, in five years, you want to break off and do your own practice. You may decide you want to switch companies. You may decide to focus on something different. So build a network now starting today. On Monday, send Jay an update. I updated my LinkedIn profile. Here's the link. I got on LinkedIn. Here's the link. Jay is going to get those on Monday because this is the weekend and just spend 30 minutes on it. 
your name, your headline, your photograph, and the beginning of a great summary, your current elevator speech refined based on what you learned today, that will help you open doors in the next six months. You're going to send those your URL, your LinkedIn profile um, URL to Jay. And remember, it's right underneath your name. So when we go look at Joswell, uh, right here is his LinkedIn profile URL. It's, uh, it's asking me to, to recommend him, endorse him. So here's the LinkedIn profile URL. And if you're looking for yours, when you are on your profile, you will also see your LinkedIn profile URL right here. Okay, so grab that, send it to Jay. I accidentally clicked on the photograph. I'm just going to close that. Send it to Jay. Why? Because Jay is going to collect them, and there should be 15 of them that he sends to me on Tuesday morning. And then next week and through next weekend, I will look at your LinkedIn profiles. Everybody that sends him a URL, only that sends him a URL on Monday because I'm incredibly um, swamped with work and I, I don't have a lot of free time send him your URL he will send it to me as a group and I will review your LinkedIn profiles and send you a couple of recommendations each one two three whatever it is I will send you a few sentences or paragraph each about something you can do to make it a little bit better polish it and that will give you the juice you need to do the next step after that Self-motivation. If you've got questions, reach out to me. Lori at LoriRuff.com is great because it won't get lost in the avalanche of, of Alpha email. You can send it to my personal email on Alpha, Lori.Ruff at alpha, uh, national alpha org. You can say, hey, Lori, I sent you an email a couple of days ago, but I haven't gotten a response yet. Can you just take a quick look? And you're going to send that to me by text message with your name so that I know who's talking and I can search on my, on my uh, email and look for you and my, my phone number, so you've got that URL um, in, the, in the chat box, and here's Lori's phone number and email, 303-718-9407. If you send me an email and you don't get a response, please send me a text message with your name and say I sent you an email, can you check? Because I, I do get a lot, a lot, a lot. Like, Coming into convention, I'll get three or four or 500 a day. Um, on July 22nd was the biggest day this year, and it was 813 in one day. So um, it's not convention season, and, um, and I'm not doing communications for Alpha anymore. Now I am wholly focused on students. I'm the SVP of membership colleges and universities, focused on the collegiate initiative for Alpha, and I am just so excited about that. Um, so please let me help you. Please take that step and help yourself to where you want to be, to become the person you want to become and to have the life that you're looking for. That's all I had to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you for the homework. We'll make sure to make use of it. Great, thank you. Does anybody have questions? And do we have any specific questions for Lori? And when when you when you look at your profile in LinkedIn, it'll tell you when you when you log into LinkedIn and you click on profile, it'll help you. It it opens up in it opens up in uh, in in uh, draft mode now. Let me see if I have uh, no, I don't have a title here yet. So let me just um, oh, this is uh, this is the um, this is the Alpha group. Go to uh, joinalpha.org and join the LinkedIn group on on Alpha uh, or the Alpha group on LinkedIn. I can't type and talk at the same time. <laughs> so join alpha.org, and that will get you to the LinkedIn group. Join the LinkedIn group. Why? There are, how many now? 23,431 other people in that group that are alpha members or who are interested in the alpha network that you can engage with and network in. So just like you do your daily updates and you look and like and comment on things on your homepage, if you want to stay connected to alpha, and the community that we've that we've built over the last 45 years, you can come in here and like and comment on. Um, don't forget to comment, like and comment on three, four, five um, updates. Generally, it's two or three because we don't get a whole lot, and we we really highly motivate or, or moderate this group. So you see, there's only like three or four in a day. 
um, that are being posted and, and that get to stay in the group. So comment on one or two of them. Join alpha.org, comment on one or two. Go into linkedin.com and look at your homepage updates, like and comment on people in your network. Uh, even each other, you'll get to say, oh, you made it. Yay, congratulations. Glad to see you're working on what you really wanted, right? Glad to see you're working with the company you really wanted to get into. How's that working? Engage with each other. Got it. Any other questions? That was kind of one I asked you for myself. <laughs> All right, Jay? All right. Can you still hear us? Yes, I can. All right, cool. Um, well, if nobody has any questions, uh, we really appreciate you speaking for us and presenting for us. I learned a lot myself um, about like navigating the ins and outs of LinkedIn, and um, so I'll, I'll definitely be leveraging that. Everyone else kind of committed to engaging. <laughs> But uh, as a thank you, we'll be sharing a, a, a Starbucks e-gift card with you later. Thank uh, you. To, to a cup of coffee. Yes, uh, if I like coffee. Absolutely, I like coffee. So does my mom and my sister. We share a Starbucks um, rewards card. That way we right. get free coffee faster. Oh, that is <laughs> Excellent. I get, I get credit for what my mom buys, and, and I let her get the free coffee because she's retired. Oh. All right. So getting free coffee for me is great. Thank you so much, really. All right. So just a small token. Thank you. All right, so um, please reach out to me. Let me know anything that you need. I am here for you. All right, cool. So if nobody has any questions, um, I guess we'll disconnect, and and hopefully you'll be hearing from us soon. Yeah. Great. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so first of all, that Starbucks advice is so great. There you go.